What have you lost as a result of Miss Heard making these allegations against you? Nothing less than everything. Nothing less than everything. Because when the allegations were made, when the allegations were rapidly cir circling the globe, telling people that I was a, a, a drunken, cocaine-fueled menace who beat women, it's over. You, you know, you're, you're done. So um, what did it do to me? What effect did it have on me? No matter the outcome of this trial, the second the allegations were made against the accusations, the second that more and more metastasized and turned into fodder for the media, once that happens, or once that happened, I lost then. That is to say, I lost. I will live with that for the rest of my life because of the allegations and because it was such a high profile case. So I lost then, no matter the outcome of this trial. I'll carry that for the rest of my day. And uh, it never had to be that way. It never had to happen. And I don't quite understand why it did in the way that it did. If you really wanted to boil down certain things in the trial of Johnny and Amber Heard, it's very much a case of two people trying to catch one another in various kinds of lies. To that end, Johnny has made it his mission to expose the truth, so that no matter what happens, the truth is at the very least out there. And one of the biggest things that he's trying to expose is the fact that he's never hurt Amber Heard or any woman in his life. And now he's gotten a surprising backer on at least part of that front. We'll break it down for you, but before we do that, go ahead and do us a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Do you want to win an iPhone 12? Maybe a MacBook Pro? How about $500 cash? All you have to do is comment the secret hidden message somewhere in this video. That's it. Oh, and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep affording these giveaways. Winner will be announced at the last day of each month. Thanks for watching and good luck. Number four, the makeup brand. Beauty brand Milani Cosmetics is inserting itself into the Depp versus her trial after one of her lawyers showed its product in court to explain how the actress covered alleged bruises on her face. During opening statements on April 12th, Heard's attorney Elaine Bredehoft held up Milani Cosmetics all-in-one correcting kit. While telling the jury how Heard concealed alleged bruises on her face, Bredehoff did not mention the brand or specific product by name, but said Heard always brought makeup with her wherever she went. This is what Amber carried in her purse for the entire relationship with Johnny, Bredehoff said, holding up the makeup product for the jury to see. She's an actor. Do you honestly think she would have left her apartment ever without makeup? Do you think she would ever have wanted other people to see her bruises and cuts? This is what she used. She became very adept at it. You're going to hear the testimony from Amber about how she had to mix the different colors for the different days of the bruises as they developed, and the different colorings and how she would use these to touch those up to be able to cover those, continued Breda Hoft. She also used concealer, foundation, Amber didn't even leave her bedroom without foundation on. In a TikTok video, Milani Cosmetics denied that their product could have been used since it wasn't sold until 2017, and Heard and Depp's marriage ended the year before when she filed for divorce. You asked us, let the record show that our correcting kit launched in 2017. The brand wrote in the caption, a source close to Heard tells people Heard's lawyers was using an example of the kind of makeup that she used. Milani Cosmetics says in a statement to People, Milani Cosmetics can confirm that the palette in question, the Milani Cosmetics Conceals Plus Perfect All-in-One Correcting Kit, did not launch until December 2017. Our video was to verify the claim that our eagle-eyed and loyal fan base made about the product named in the trial. Milani Cosmetics is not taking a formal stance on the trial, evidence or future outcome of the case. An interesting turn of events though, 
it is one that does beg an important question. Number three, does this matter? Rather blunt, but allow us to run with it for various reasons, not the least of which is that this case is one that can be defined by the very minute details of both sides. How so? Well, Amber is attempting to prove that she never did anything to Depp and was in fact the victim of his AB, but Depp is trying to do the same thing and has actually already proven that Heard has lied about never ABing him during their relationship. So thus, Heard's statements and actions absolutely matter in this case due to how important it is that she convey her injuries and how she handled them. As for the makeup, one could very easily make the case that, like the source said, it was just, quote, an example of makeup that was used by her during her time with Johnny. But if that's the case, why didn't she go super specific? In fact, her lawyer kind of did by saying that this was the kind of makeup that she used to clear up the bruises that were on her face. Yes, it might not have meant much to them to go into the brands as it didn't matter overall in the case that is still going on, but it does raise questions because you'd think that given all the bruises she allegedly had to clear up, that she would know by heart which ones she did and didn't use at the time. Instead, she used a brand for the opening statement that didn't have a product available. Why use the visual at all if it wasn't an accurate representation of things. The jury, especially the women on the jury, wouldn't have needed a visual when the lawyer said she used various kinds of makeup to hide her injuries. They all know how makeup works. While this may not matter on the larger scale, it is something that can create doubt and inconsistencies, which is something Amber Heard does not want on her during this trial. Another thing she doesn't want is witnesses showing off her not-so-good side, which is indeed what happened when the court resumed on Monday. Number two, Ben King. The court heard from Ben King, the manager of the house in Australia where Depp and Heard had the fight in 2015, which led to Depp's finger being sliced off. King said that Heard was crying hysterically when he arrived at the house. Depp's personal doctor, David Kipper, was rummaging through a trash bin looking for the fingertip. King went downstairs in the bar and games room to look for the fingertip. He said, walking down into the bar, I could see the damage. A broken ping pong table, lots of broken glass, cans strewn around the bar area. Directly at the end of the bar, there was a scrunched up piece of kitchen paper with lots of blood in it. It, the fingertip, was within the scrunched up piece of paper on the tiled floor by one of the bar stools. I gathered it up in the kitchen area, walked back up to the kitchen and got a little plastic bag, put the fingertip in there, set it on top of some ice and handed it over to David Kipper and Jerry Judge, who were keen to get it to the hospital quickly to see if it could be reattached. King said that he flew back to Los Angeles with Heard, where she admitted to him, have you ever been so angry with someone you just lose it with them? King said that Heard became incredulous when he said no and they didn't really speak after that until they landed. That doesn't paint Amber Heard very well, don't you think? Why would she be incredulous about that? What's more, why would she even ask that of someone? That was her way of all but confirming that she hurt Johnny and caused his fingertip to be lost. A major point of contention in the case, and her being mad at King for not relating to her anger, makes her seem all the more volatile. Number one, the neighbor. Going back to the question of makeup for a bit, an early piece of testimony in the case actually further puts down on what Amber did to conceal her bruises. This comes from Isaac Barrick, Heard and Depp's former neighbor, who had a good relationship with Heard despite knowing Johnny for longer. And at one point in time, she attempted to quote, show her bruises to him with mixed results. He said that Heard told him Johnny came by last night and he became violent. He said that he questioned Heard asking, he hit you? And she said, yeah, he threw a phone at me and hit me. And I'm looking because I had seen her two feet away and I'm going, where? He said that Heard put her head out for him to look at her face. I'm looking at the whole thing and I don't see anything. I don't see a cut, a bruise, swelling. It's just Amber's face. He also insisted that Heard was not wearing makeup. He said that he then made the joke to her, well, I don't see anything, but maybe all the beauty from one side of the face is outshining everything. And she's laughing and smiled. And I just looked at everybody and said, hey, this sounds nuts. He said that he gave her a hug and kissed her on the side of her face. Now, as her lawyers noted, she could have been wearing makeup in a way that didn't make it clear she had it on, which is a classic movie trick. But that raises the question of why she would show her face out to him if the bruise was hidden. Others have also come forward and noted that Heard claimed to have bruises on her, but they never saw them. And there you have it, everyone. A look at what the company Milani had to say about Amber Heard's claims via the lawyer's opening statements. How that might impact things going forward, and what others might step forward in order to make their own claims about Amber Heard. Do you think this call out will do something for the case? Or was this really just an innocent mistake? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel.